Okay, let's talk about the other shadow property in CSS, and that's the box shadow property. With the box shadow property, what you're doing is you are putting a shadow on the content box. Text shadow puts the shadow on the text itself, the shadow cast by the forms of the letters. Box shadow takes the content box for whatever you're working with. So here, I've got the H1, I've shrunk it down so it's half the width of the page, I've put some margin around it, I've put some padding inside the box, the padding is between the text and the edges of the content box. Border would be along the edges here, we could put a border on it if we wanted as well. But I want to put a box shadow. So, box shadow is the property, and just like text shadow, it gets four individual values. The first two are the horizontal and vertical displacement, third one is the blur radius, and the fourth one is the color. So 2px, 2px, I'm saying the shadow should be 2px over to the right and 2px down. So you can see I've got the dark border here and here and nothing on the top or the left. Blur radius, how much you want to blur that. So I'll go 4px. Now by default you get black as the color, that's pretty dark. So I'm going to do something a little bit lighter, RGBA, sure we can do the... Uh, 255, 255, oh sorry, 000 for black. But I want to reduce it by putting an alpha on here. Let's say 0 0.7, 0 0.5. And you can see how it's, it's fading. It's letting more of the background color show through. So 50% alpha. That's the basics of a box shadow. Now if I wanted to put it on the other side, we could do that by simply making these negative numbers. So horizontally negative and negative puts it on the other two sides. If you wanted to have two shadows, one here and one on the other side, just put a comma between them. And then negative 2px, negative 2px, oops, negative 2px, 4px, the same as it was with the other one, RGBA, and let's go 128. 120 and 64 with a 50% alpha. There we go. So we've got a faint green colored shadow on the top here. And then the dark gray shadow on these two sides. So just putting the comma between all these values gives you those four sides covered with the shadow. Now you can also, if you want, use hover the pseudo class to add a different shadow. So we can say that when we hover, we want to have only that one shadow, like that. And we can even change the displacement. We can say, okay, it's going to be 4px out. So when I move over, there we go. Makes it look like the box is rising up. We're just hiding that top one to make it look like it's shifting slightly in that direction and we're increasing the shadow which gives the illusion of it being lifted up off the page. Okay, so that's the basics of working with a box shadow. It's just the shadow being placed around the content area, not on the text itself. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and as always, thanks for watching.